So once upon a time, I was feeling pretty, pretty lousy. You know, I was sneezing and coughing and hacking up phlegm. And no matter what I did, my allergies seemed to get worse. I tried all sorts of new medications and nothing was helping. Uh, so I decided, hey, let's try eating better. And that didn't seem to help. And so finally, I started having asthma attacks. I caved in and went to the doctor. And the doctor said, you've got allergies. I said, well, that's nothing new. I've always had allergies. So I went home, tried other medications, and one day I had allergies and I figured out what I was allergic to. It was ibuprofen. And so I went to the doctor and said, hey, I'm allergic to ibuprofen. He said, well, you need to look up the asthma triangle or triad. And I said, okay, I'll look that up. That sounds great. And I looked it up and I found salicylate sensitivity. Now, I had never heard of this. And as I dove into it, I discovered really, this is definitely what I had. So let's talk about what is a salicylate. Well, Silly Sally ate some fruit and died, but salicylate is something more than that. It's pretty much in anything that grows in the sun. You're gonna find it in the roots, the stems, the leaves, the flowering parts of the plants, the fruiting parts and the seeds. It's really in everything. It's in higher concentrations, of course, in the fruits. Um, it's in higher concentration when it's picked not ripe, like in stores. So if you wait and pick it off the vine yourself, it's going to be a lot better. Or if you peel off the skins and remove the seeds, it'll be better for you. Um, but Sally Silly was actually discovered because of the willow tree. Uh, back in the day, people go over to the old willow and they peel off some willow bark to chew on it to get um, rid of headaches and things like that because willow bark was good for anti-inflammatory reasons. Um, they called the compound in um, the willow tree uh, salicylate for the salix tree, so salis or salicylate, right? So uh, the, some doctor then discovered a way of synthesizing it and was able to make acetyl salicylic acid, or if you recognize that, aspirin. And uh, nowadays people are having problems with it, and I'm going to go ahead and just describe why using a level. So imagine you eat a certain amount each day. As you eat, your levels go up, and after they go up, you your body starts to detox and they go back down. And then you eat again and it goes back up. And then, of course, the body detoxes and goes back down. However, some people have the horrible unfortunity that I have that suddenly the body lowers the bar. And then, when you eat your normal around, m amount, it surpasses it, and then you're above it, and then you start having inflammation rather than not inflammation. And so you have inflammation in the lungs causing asthma, inflammation in the neck and the head causing headaches, uh, inflammation in the stomach causing stomach pains. And so then you're suddenly stuck playing this horrible game of limbo, and you cannot handle it. And so... Let's talk about some of the fruits and vegetables that you're not supposed to eat. See, uh, we of course have already mentioned no fruits. Well, except for a few. Bananas are really low in salicylates and uh, so are pears. But if you're trying to go salicylate free, which I wouldn't suggest once you see this list, you'll understand why, uh, you're going to have to cut those out too because of course they still have it. Your vegetables have salicylates except for a few which are really low such as your uh, iceberg lettuce and your potatoes. You know, you can also eat cabbage and onions because they're also low. Um, spices. So if you like a little bit of cumin or cinnamon in your food, scratch that plan. They're high in salicylates, all of them. Uh, your grains, they have salicylates. They're a plant, but they're very low. It's almost negligible. Pretty much all grains are really low in salicylates. Your proteins, being meat, are fine if they're from a vegetable. Oh, well, scratch that plan. And then your dairy's okay as well. Uh, and you know, if you look at that list, basically that's a oh, that's a ham and cheese sandwich. Just no spices, no condiments, and uh, definitely no decorations. So uh, good luck with this, right? Um, but that's basically salicylate sensitivity in a nutshell. Uh, you have to be careful with what you eat. It's best to eat low amounts of it and keep yourself below that bar so that you do not have reactions.